Hi, I'm Tim, and welcome to Watch You Want. Thanks for logging on. Today, you're looking at the watchmaking equivalent of Prince William. This is the Panerai Radiomir 8 Days. Now, this one is a bit of a uh, member of royalty with uh, combat seasoning. You're looking at a Panerai PAM 190. What's special about that? Well, it packs the firepower of a Jeter Lecoult 8 Day Manual Wind Movement in the famed Panerai Radiomir combat seasoned case. Now you begin to see where I'm coming from. Now this one is the image of the Radiomir as it was developed originally as the model 3646 for the Italian Decima Flotilla prior to and during World War II. It was the original combat tactical swimmer's dive watch. It was used in operations in the Mediterranean. The idea being originally that Panerai, being a manufacturer of naval instruments, underwater navigation tools, survival equipment for elite forces was the ideal candidate to develop the first generation combat dive watch, which they did masterfully by taking a Rolex Oyster pocket watch case, by rotating it, by soldering on wire lugs and adapting it to their needs with a large Panerai designed, Panerai loomed, no nonsense, easy to understand dial. They created what was essentially an underwater instrument Time telling was just incidental. But the bottom line is that this one takes that look into the 21st century. Now, the Radiomir, originally the name of the radium based paint on the dial, became a model in its own right in 1997 in the newly Civi Panerai model line. That was the PAM 21, unobtainable these days, but the die was cast for the modern rendition of the Radiomir. And by 2000, Richemont, the luxury holding group, owned both Officine Panerai, acquired in 1997, and Jezure Le Coult, manufacturer extraordinaire, and as they say, the watchmaker to royalty. Combine the two with the JLC movement and the Radiomir case, and you have the PAM 190 Radiomir 8 days. But there's even more going on here than meets the eye, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the watch over and let you feast your eyes on the Panerai Caliber OP14. Now, this one has an incredible story behind it. Yes, it's an eight-day movement. Yes, it features a hidden case-back power reserve, refinements like Cote de Genève and a swan's neck regulator. But there's even more going on there because JLC had a fantastic tradition of eight-day movements in the first half of the 20th century. Only in the first half of the 20th century. It wasn't until the 21st century that the company began to get back to its watchmaking roots from its very earliest days as Jezir Le Coult and start redeveloping eight-day movements. And it wasn't until 2002 for the 70th anniversary reverso. For those of you keeping track, that should have been 2001, but it took them an extra year to develop the movement, and it was worth the wait. The 70th anniversary reverso. The caliber 879 spawned a generation of eight-day modern Jezure Le Coult movements. The, tr the finest traditions of Swiss watchmaking were employed. Finest finishing, traditional shapes, traditional regulators, finishing. The eight-day power reserve with twin barrels in series. There was nothing else like it in the industry at the time. And because Panerai had a history of eight-day movements from their own combat days, the combination of that 70th anniversary reverso movement and the Panerai Radiomir case, it just made sense. And what you have is that PAM 190 that you see right here. Now today, Panerai is very much a luxury watchmaker and all the elements of luxury finish are here. Panerai pioneered the sandwich dial during the 1930s. The idea that you would have a cutout stencil with the indexes and the numerals on it, and then underneath you would have a fully loomed disc. And the idea is that it gives you more depth. It gives you a three-dimensional effect so that as the loom shines up through those wells dug into the stencil on top, it illuminates the edges of the wall heading down into the stencil so you get more of a 3D radiant effect that does a better job of sequestering the loom and defining what you're looking at. It's more visible and it's also more beautiful because now finished finely with beautifully constrained cutouts it looks the part of a premium product, complemented by center-mounted rose gold hour and minute hands with a subsidiary constant second hand at 3 o'clock. The watch looks the part of a dress reference. Polished bezel, polished stainless steel case in 45 millimeter. The watch wears well on my wrist, which is 6 and a third inches. That's 16 centimeters for our metric friends. And you could wear this with a suit. You could wear this black tie. You could wear this to dinner. It's fairly thin, I have to say, because of the manual wind JLC movement, and because there's a tremendous amount of tumble home from the top of the crystal to the edge of the case, a cup will slide up and over this one easily. 
and it's beautifully paired with alligator, black alligator strap right here with a monotone tight stitch. And alligator really is the formal choice if you want to go with dress. So you have the white metal, the black dial, the ever so slightly lime colored Luminova indexes, the rose gold case, and that beautiful complimentary alligator strap. It's a little bit special because alligator is not a look you see on Panerai too, too often. Uh, they tend to prefer a traditional calf skin, just like the old combat divers, or a rubber treatment. To get the combination of alligator with the polished stainless steel, the rose gold hands, the black dial, and that gorgeous JLC movement, that's really what makes this one special. Now let's talk a little bit about that movement. Of course, it was developed for the Reverso, which is a rectangular watch. So you might note that this one being round is a little bit modified from its original form. In fact, uh, JLC took the reference 877, which was adapted for round watches, and they employed it here. Panerai hot rods it in two ways. First and foremost, they add a case back power reserve. The original JLC equivalent had a power reserve on the dial. In keeping with its tradition of spare, legible, elemental dials, Panerai moves the power reserve indicator to the case back, and I feel that's a distinct upgrade over the way JLC did things. Moreover, the JLC movement was a 25 joule movement. Panerai upgrades that to 33 joules to accommodate their mechanical modifications and keep things running smoothly. The decoration is simple but well done. You see the horizontal linear Cote de Genève. All of the bridges are beveled quite nicely. The swan's neck regulator is a nice vintage touch that's inherited from the JLC caliber 877 and 879 family, and it's well executed in this case. All of the refinement that you expect of JLC is here, and because it is a modern movement designed for the way people wear their watches today, it's also rugged enough for everyday use. It gives you that perfect combination of a manual wind watch that you wind just often enough to enjoy the experience without ever feeling the pressure to keep it topped off. That's just the right way, I think, because with a luxury watch, you want that sense of interaction with your watch. You don't want the burden of having to remember to stop it from winding down or worry that en route to an important meeting, your watch may be running slow or stopped entirely. And the winding of the JLC movement is a pure pleasure in the hand. Tactile, outstanding, this is what a premium movement feels like. And with this Panerai Radiomir 8 Days PAM190, you could see what a premium watch looks like. See this one on our website, Watch You Want, with full Panerai boxes, papers, documents of provenance, and accessories. I'm confident that if you like Panerai, but you need a black tie companion, or just the do-it-all watch that looks good in anything, this Radiomir 8 Days PAM190 may be just the watch you want.